Hey guys, so welcome to our lab on behavior of gases, okay? Um, so you're in the assignment right now. Hopefully that's where you found this video that you are watching, which will be something somewhere in here. My setup looks a little different from yours because I have the, the teacher version, okay? Uh, but you're watching the video. You're going to open up the spreadsheet and the simulation, okay, which you're going to use to complete this lab. Um, so you open the link, should take you here, you're going to click play on that, and then the simulation should pop up, it's H HTML5, so it's going to work on phones, tablets, whatever, okay? You're going to click here on ideal gas, this is what we're going to work with. Um, so you want to click here on with, and you want to open the number of particles, okay? Uh, because you're going to need all these measurements here in order to complete the lab. Okay, basically the premise of the lab, okay, and I also link the simulation, I'm going to link the video in here as well, is you're going to test uh, what things change pressure. You're going to mess with the volume, see how that changes pressure, okay? And then these ones that are dark, you're gonna, these are the variables that you're going to keep constant. You're going to run three different experiments, okay? And you're gonna record your data. And I'm gonna show you an example here. So basically, uh, first thing you gotta do is you gotta put in some gas particles in there, okay? And for the purpose of the experiment, I want you to keep just one type of gas. So either the blue one or the heavy one, okay? Uh, just, just to keep things consistent. So you're going to say for, um, let's say we pick the second experiment here. Okay, we're going to say we're going to keep, uh, for the second experiment, we're going to keep volume and number of particles consistent. We're going to mess with the pressure and the temperature. You can't really mess with the pressure. That's our dependent variable, but we can mess with the temperature. So you have a value for 300 Kelvin you can put in there and you have a value for pressure. The pressure is not going to be perfectly consistent. You just kind of pick a value that's close to the values in there. So this would be between like 5.9 and 6.6 .6 atmosphere. And then you're going to increase the temperature, you know, to whatever, 422 and see what happens to pressure. Or you can decrease the pressure and so forth. Okay. You for this expert, for this one here, we'll say R our volume is 10.0 nanometers for every single one, right? And our number of particles is 53. So for every single one, I've got 53 particles. Okay, so 53 and so forth. I can also, since the numbers are the same, I can drag that little, grab that little square and drag it all the way down. So it copies everything all the way down. Now I'm going to make up some, um, values here okay and I'm just totally um, making this up I'm just gonna double it each time okay um, and then I'm gonna answer this question as temperature increases the number of collisions against the wall of the container and then I have a little drop down menu here that are your choices to complete that sentence is it gonna increase or decrease it's based on what you just said therefore the pressure either increases or decreases pressure and temperature are directly or inversely proportional okay so remember directly proportional they both go up and down together inversely proportional one goes up the other one goes down okay so use your data to answer these questions and then the next thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to create a graph for your data using the spreadsheet okay so i'm going to show you how to do that right now so say we highlight pressure here as one of the data okay, that we're going to use. We're going to go to insert and then down to chart. Okay, and we're going to insert a chart. And it should be inserting a chart. There it is. Okay, now this chart is not the way we want it. First of all, it's ginormous. I'm going to make it a little smaller and make it fit right here next to the data table that it applies to. Now, as you can see, we have the y-axis for pressure, but we have nothing on the x-axis, okay? So here it says, let's add an x-axis, and I'm going to add temperature, okay? I'm going to press OK. Now, 
I have temperature values right there. But I need a title for the graph. I need to label my axes and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to customize. Okay. You can change colors, chart style, all that stuff. Uh, one thing here, your, la your uh, graph may have started as like a, a scatter plot or something like that. For the purposes of the slab, you want it to be a line chart. So line chart, okay, x-axis, all that good stuff. That's on the setup portion. Then you're going to go over here to customize. Um, you can change the color and do all that you know, fun stuff if you want to mess with that. That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to make that a requirement. I do expect everything to be labeled correctly. So the chart title okay, should not be pressure and atmosphere. Title of a graph should always be whatever's on the y-axis versus the x-axis. So this should be pressure versus uh, temperature. We're looking at the, the relationship between those two. My horizontal or my x-axis should be titled, in this case, temperature. And I should include my units, which should be Kelvin. Okay? And then my vertical x, uh, y, or my vertical axis, which would be the y-axis, is already labeled in this case. So hooray. Okay? One thing I think I want you guys to do is for the chart title, let's make sure we put that in the middle. So I'm going to go, so I went back to chart title, and then over here I'm going to align it in the middle. Okay? So this is just an opportunity for you guys to learn how to use uh, spreadsheets to create graphs. Okay, spreadsheets are very, very important in uh, the business world. Um, for some reason, my x-axis lost all of the numbers. That's very interesting. I am not sure why it's doing that, and I'm going to try to troubleshoot this here just on the fly with you guys. Um, what is going on with my x-axis? So I played with this for a little while here, and what I just had to do is I had to go back to setup. For whatever reason, it just disappeared. It lost all the numbers. And I had to click on adding the x-axis again, and I highlighted this column. Okay, That's the first time that happened to me. But hey, that's the thing with technology. Weird things happen, and you just have to troubleshoot. If something really goes crazy and really totally bizarre, what I would do, and if it's really stressing me out, is just click on that chart right there and just press delete and then just start over. Sometimes that's the best thing you can do. Okay. Uh, Again, if you have any trouble or any questions, please let me know, okay? And I will do my best to help you out. So you're going to conduct three experiments, and you're going to have three data tables and three graphs, okay? Uh, and what you can do is when you create your graph, go to that spot on this video and just watch me do each step and follow along. And then you have some questions to answer. So you're going to read these scenarios, okay? And then you're going to have a box here at the bottom that you're going to you just click on that and then you start answering okay so you're going to answer both of these conclusion questions your answer should not be super long like one or two sentences maybe three sentences should be enough for you to answer these questions and then you click the turn in button okay um, going back to the assignment there is a rubric and you can read the rubric on your own, but this is how I am going to grade you. Okay, this lab will be worth 20 points. Um, and that is it for this lab tutorial. I know I went really fast on how to do that chart. Okay, but when you are ready to create your own chart, just go back to that spot in the video, follow it step by step. After you get your first graph done, the second and the third one will be really easy. Okay. We're going to use this time to learn some new skills that may just be useful to us later on in the future, regardless of the job that we get. Bye-bye.